everyone, I'm Maria Soreo. The Rancho Palos Verdes City Council has reorganized. Susan Brooks is mayor and Jerry Dehovic is mayor pro tem. The reorganization took place at the council's December 4th meeting. Outgoing Mayor Pro Tem Brian Campbell led a special presentation for outgoing Mayor Anthony Mizetich. Campbell was next in line for the mayor's post, but instead nominated his colleague Jerry Dehovic. Susan Brooks was nominated by Jim Knight and was selected by a 3-2 vote. Brooks served as mayor back in 1994 and says she's excited to leave the city again in 2013. We have our 40th year reunion um, our anniversary and I'm eager to work with the staff and the city on that because really this is everybody's city and we have to congratulate each other and really work toward unity. Um, also I want to bring this work to bring this council together. Uh, this is going to be essential. We build a team because we have to remember there is no I in team. There's also no I in transparency. And there's no so, also no I, it occurred to me, in trust. So to earn the trust of the people, we really do need to be honest. We need to be honest with ourselves, honest with each other, honest with our God, and uh, move forward in the best positive way. And I'm looking forward to it. Dehovic said he looked forward to working with Mayor Brooks and thanked Councilman Campbell for nominating him. 2013 we have a lot going on. As I mentioned earlier, we have um, San Ramon Canyon getting the construction started, uh, the financing of the project and hopefully getting that built without any uh, uh, major breakdowns at the site. Uh, second we have Altamira Canyon. I'm going to start talking this up. This is a project that is of, of at least the same scale, if not greater, and we're going to have to worry about getting the funding for that, building that project out, etc. So maybe we'll learn uh, through the San Ramon process. Portuguese Bend, the slide in and of itself, that's something we're going to have to deal with. We need to really take a long-term look uh, at resolving that issue, or at least starting. It may take 10, 20, 30 years, uh, but we really do have to take a look at that. I never decided to run for election thinking that I needed to be mayor. All I ever aspired to was to serve on city council. Just the fact that I was mayor pro tem last year was a real treat, it was a real opportunity to, uh, uh, you know, to take over for the mayor on a number of different occasions. And, uh, and, and that was fulfilling, but so was my two years prior to that when, uh, when I was a councilman. I'm excited that we've got more than uh, enough people to get the mayor's job, mayor pro tem job uh, done effectively. And, and one day would I like to take that position? Absolutely. And, uh, and I look forward to that. But for, for right here, right now, uh, uh, you know, I thought Jerry and, and now Susan are, are the right people to, uh, uh, you know, to spearhead us going forward. And you can always watch the RPV City Council meetings live on RPV TV the first and third Tuesdays of every month. The City of Rancho Palos Verdes has received the final permit it needs to begin work on stabilizing San Ramon Canyon. During the City Council meeting, officials announced that the Army Corps of Engineers approved the permit, allowing the $20 million project to move forward. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm also pleased to uh, make another uh, important announcement, and that is, is that uh, last night our city has received from the Department of the Army uh, the Army Corps of Engineers, the final permit for the San Ramon Canyon project. Mm -hmm. This uh, is the last regulatory hurdle that we needed for the project. Uh, I, my understanding is now that we'll be going to pre-bidding for uh, actual uh, contract construction companies and uh, uh, be choosing one of those in the near future and then moving ahead on the, on the project. The pre-bidding for the project is underway and financing for San Ramon is still being worked out. So far, the city has received a state grant of $9.4 million for the project. And another big project not too far from San Ramon is the resurfacing project planned for Palos Verdes Drive East in 2013. The Traffic Safety Commission will hold public workshops for the community to attend. 
Meetings are tentatively set for February 2nd and March 13, 2013. For more information, you can go to the city's website or email Public Works at traffic at rpv.com. Democrat State Senator Ted Lieu is now representing the Palos Verdes Peninsula. This month, the peninsula became a part of Lieu's 28th district after statewide redistricting. Senator Lou spoke with Liz Brown Swanson during a recent episode of RPV City Talk about important issues to our residents, including his commitment to make sure cities maintain control of receiving transient occupancy tax, such as the millions of dollars received from the Terranea Resort. We were talking earlier, just one of the concerns like here in this city and RPV would be to protect um, the city's collection of TOT, the transient occupancy tax. I just didn't know where you would stand on something like that. I would oppose a reduction of uh, funds to the city. I also think uh, cities should have local control over uh, how they want to uh, collect and allocate. The passage of Proposition 30 last month is expected to generate billions of dollars in revenue for California. Money brought in by Prop 30's temporary sales and income tax increases is intended to help fund education. The superintendent of Palos Verdes Peninsula Unified School District, Walker Williams, explains how the measure will impact our local schools. We were looking at such catastrophic cuts um, prior to the election, almost $5 million a year. And so Prop 30 helps us. It doesn't solve all the economic problems. They still have work to do in Sacramento. And we're probably still looking at some reductions, but it's, we're a lot better off with 30 than we were without 30. So that's good news. Great thing is, is the uh, kids continue to perform. The teachers, they're doing an amazing job. And it's just, a, it's, it's just really, the budget sidetracks you, but at the same time, it really did. The people stay focused on what they're supposed to do, and that's educating students. Williams said despite the district's financial woes, Peninsula schools continue to excel. And when we come back, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas at the Terranea Resort. And our four-legged friends get an early present from the city of RPV. Hi, my name is Captain Andy Olvera with the Los Angeles County Fire Department stationed here at Fire Station 106 in Rolling Hills Estates. This year is our 20th year in partnership with ABC7 collecting toys for the less fortunate. You can take any unwrapped toy or gift to any fire station throughout the county and uh, help somebody who might be less fortunate this season. So from our firehouse to your home, happy holidays and have a safe season. Rancho Palos Verdes has opened its first temporary dog park right here on the grounds of City Hall. The park is named Rancho Caninos and is separated for smaller and larger dogs. The facility will be unstaffed and rules are posted. The dog park is open seven days a week from one hour before sunrise and closes one hour after sunset. Please remember that dogs must be leashed when outside of the facility and no aggressive dogs are allowed. And while you're enjoying everything that comes along with the holidays, it's important to remember safety first. When it comes to Christmas trees, many dry out and become a fire hazard. Captain Andy Alvera from the LA County Fire Department tells us more on being mindful of safety during the season. We always recommend, obviously, the artificial trees uh, are better and safer. Uh, it's, it's definitely something that's not as much of a concern for us. Uh, they build them with fire retardant material, and they're definitely something that, that we would actually recommend. Okay. Uh, we do know, and many of us, us ourselves, purchase the, the fresh trees because they, are, they're, they smell great, right. they look great, and it's tradition. So if you do choose to do that, the most important thing to do is make sure you keep them watered appropriately and don't let them go dry. Uh, when you purchase it, they'll, cut the, they'll do a fresh cut off the bottom and that will help preserve the tree and get it through the season. And as soon as the season's over, as, as soon as possible, uh, it's best to remove that tree and, and remove that hazard. Definitely daily want to, want to put water in that tree. Uh, they have tree additives, water additives that you can put to help preserve it. Uh, things you also want to make sure you're doing is if you're putting lights on that tree, make sure they're good lights. You want to test them if they show any type of faulty uh, activity at all, if they're, if they're shorting out or anything, definitely, definitely get rid of those. Uh, the, the smaller bulbs create less, less heat, 
Okay. Uh, LED, LEDs are even better. Okay. Uh, but it's the wiring and the faulty wiring that usually is what uh, is the cause of those tree fires. So you want to make sure if you if you use one of those circuit breakers, put a circuit breaker on, check it, make sure it works properly, and uh, like you push the reset button and it'll it'll pop the, the circuit breaker and make sure that's actually happening before you actually start using them. And to keep you safe on the road, Lameda Sheriff's Deputy Chris Knox wants to remind all of our residents the importance of having a designated driver so you can truly enjoy your holidays. We'd like to remind everyone not to drink and drive during the holidays. Mm -hmm. Every year in the U.S. there's about 10,000 people are killed in alcohol-related crashes. So, but other things that we want to remind people about are things like cell phones and texting. Mm -hmm. Uh, no one under 18 should be on a cell phone, even hands-free. Okay. But if you're over 18, hands-free is okay. And we also want to remind people to wear seatbelts. Uh, nation nationwide, uh, seatbelt average is about 89, 90 percent. Oh. Everybody should be wearing their, their seatbelts for safety. Uh, the Sheriff's Department wants to remind people not to drink and drive during the holidays. Uh, personally, I would suggest uh, not having more than two drinks if you plan on going on drive. Mm -hmm. You might want to have a designated driver or make other arrangements. Taxis would be happy to give you a ride. Uh, mm -hmm. Things like that. Just Thanks. plan ahead so you'll be smart. And the PV Transit will be back again this year, offering free bus service on New Year's Eve. The service is available to residents and will only be available on the peninsula. Be sure to make your reservations early by calling 310-544-3710 between the hours of 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. Monday through Friday. Plan ahead for a safe and happy holiday season. And to get you in the holiday spirit, the Terranea Resort is dressed up for the occasion with their annual tree lighting. Liz Brown Swanson has more. Maria, what a celebration here at Terranea. More than a thousand people from our community all have come together to get into the holiday spirit. Lots of singing, bell ringing, and of course the big moment was the lighting of this 40-foot tree. Talk about it. It's in its beauty. It is. It is completely fabulous. It's kind of funny because we put it up a week ago and I've been on everybody's case not to turn it on because of course until tonight you can't have the tree lit. So it's wonderful to see it finally lit and it will remain lit of course for the rest of the month. Happy holidays to you. What a celebration going on right now. It is so exciting. We are so happy to kick off the season and look at this room and outside. We're so pleased and we are so excited to be able to share this with the community. All of our entertainers are community groups and so we're very pleased that they would come out and celebrate with us. What do you think of all this? It's amazing. There are so many people here and uh, there's been some really great music. The uh, acapella group that just came on was really cool. So I'm loving it. Baby Lucas, baby Santa, first Christmas, Mark. Yeah, this is his first time here at Terranea. And um, and yeah, I think he'll, he'll really like seeing the, light, the tree get lit up and yeah, I think he's going to have a good time. of fun things happening through the holidays it's just a, just to walk around and see how festive it all looks we're very excited we have our holiday traditions and so it goes from now all the way through New Year's Eve so you can go on our website and see all of the wonderful activities that we have for children and adults well there's so much Christmas spirit already and there's so many kids and it's so fun and we're just coloring and I love it Talk about what you enjoy most about the holiday time especially here at Terranea I enjoy more of just just the kids smile on their faces. Are you having fun? Yes. What do you love most about the holiday time? Presents. The presents. Have you made a list for Santa? Not yet. Tell me some of the fun things you've been doing here at Terranea. Coloring. What do you think of the tree? It's pretty. Certainly everyone here in the holiday spirit, Maria, back to you in the studio. 
Remember, Terranea is always a great place to enjoy any occasion, including their New Year's Eve celebration. For more information, you can go to their website at terranea.com. And since we are all shopping a little more during the holidays, we want to remind everyone the importance of shopping right here in our own backyard. President and CEO of the Palos Verdes Peninsula Chamber of Commerce, Eileen Hupp, tells us more about how your sales tax dollars benefits everyone in our community when we shop local first. Studies have shown that um, money spent in our local community, about 25% more um, returns to the local community than when you spend with a national chain store. Okay. Um, but what happens with your local sales tax dollars is the cities can use that money for city services and also to improve infrastructure. So whether it's improving a park or maybe landscaping on a median strip or any of the many services that our cities provide to our residents are all obviously helped when they are the recipients of local sales tax dollars. And you need to think about all the areas covering the peninsula. We have incredible stores on Western Avenue. Um, we have stores in Golden Cove Shopping Center. We have, of course, you know, the Promenade and Peninsula Center and uh, Lanata Bay. There's stores all over and many, it's not just stores, but it's restaurants, it's your bank, it's your CPA, it's your attorney, your dentist. When you do business locally, our entire quality of life improves exponentially. Now, what about, is there a directory or where's the best place to look up all of the stores and services that we have here? That's a very good question. Um, on the Chamber website, we have a business directory of all our Chamber member businesses. And so that's just palosverdeschamber.com. And you can look up by category. Let's say you're looking for a dentist or horseback riding or you know a restaurant. Or you can also look um, alphabetically by name. Another really important um, reason to do business locally, Maria, would be what I call the ripple effect, which is basically when you shop at, let's say, your local gift store, then they can hire an employee. And when they can hire that employee, that employee can then go have lunch in a local restaurant, do an errand at a local store, maybe deposit their money in the local bank. And then that creates a ripple effect, which enables all of those businesses to thrive. So it's really recirculating money within the community. Um, another thing I would just like to point out too is that, you know, because you and I have talked before about how the culture in our community is so philanthropic and so generous. Mm -hmm. and. Our local philanthropies really depend on our local businesses, whether they're looking for sponsorships for fundraising events or auction events. And if our businesses thrive, then they can support our local philanthropies. So, you know, if we want to be able to give back to others who are less fortunate, we really do lean heavily on our local businesses. So it's incumbent on all of us to support our local businesses. And in sports, it has been 47 years since PV High football has won a CIF championship. Well, that is until now. In a season where the team began 0-3, they managed to accomplish the success that eluded them for almost five decades. I sat down with head coach Guy Gardner and some of the players who talk about how this team worked together to turn their season around. Never made it to the locker room in the, uh, oh. after the victory. Yeah, uh, we're all out in the field, and it's raining on us, and it was just kind of crazy. Um, just the realization, all that hard work, you know, and wow, we, we really, you know, that when 50 guys get together and decide they're going to work super hard, they're going to be unselfish, they're going to work together, this can happen. There were a lot of people, a lot of, I, I, think, I think we had some players maybe from 1965 that were there on the sideline. I wish I would have met them personally. Uh, I know some longtime coaches at Palos Verdes were there on the sideline. So that made it special too and all, all sorts of, you know, and we had a great crowd and it was, it was really neat. We uh, had a rough start going 0-3, but um, that first win against Moore Park at home was huge for us. You know, they're a very good team. They've had a really good program for a long time and uh, we really just came together after that game and um, it was just a great feeling to win. I think that in the past few years we've had am amazing players and a Brotherhood, but there's just something different about the brotherhood we had. I think it was just had something to do with, I mean, we're just three of people who played on the same Pop Warner team, but I mean, there was like probably 12 or 13, probably more, that we all played on the same exact Pop Warner team for seven years. So just the brotherhood was stronger than I can remember in any years past that I played. You know, my feet were soaking wet. You didn't care. Yeah, we didn't care about anything. My, I was hurt, but I couldn't even feel it anymore because I was so happy. 
you know, I go home every day and I, I don't know what to do because yeah. I don't have football. <laughs> And a big congratulations to PV High for a job well done, not an easy feat. And the Lakers may be struggling early on, but they certainly know just how important it is to give back to their community. I caught up with Dwight Howard and Meta World Peace, who surprised some big brothers and little brothers who gathered for a holiday dinner. Well, this is, this is more important than anything we can ever do on the court, you know. Uh, at the end of the day, we can win as many games and do all that stuff. But if we don't impact our community and the places that we, we travel, you know, off the court, then basically uh, we haven't really done our job, you know. We have a, a very important task of bringing communities together. And, you know, that's why they come to games. You know, they, they come to see us play. And for that two, two and a half hours, they get an opportunity to forget about everything that they go through at home and just have fun. And now we have an opportunity to step off the court and uh, be a blessing to, you know, kids and, you know, anybody. You know, so we, we, uh, we, we should take this very seriously. So Big Brothers Big Sisters is the oldest and largest mentoring organization in the whole country. And we're one of uh, those organizations here in Los Angeles. And um, kids and moms and parents hear about the program through people at school or word of mouth or their neighbors. Um, it's, it's a hundred year old program so people know about Big Brothers Big Sisters. So we don't have any problem recruiting kids for our program. We've got uh, over 500 uh, this year that are matched with a big brother or big sister and another 370 today are waiting. The boys wait longer than the girls. Sometimes the boys wait up until a year to get matched with Big Brother. Now tell us um, about how you got involved in Big Brothers and why you're here tonight. Uh, I got involved with uh, Big Brothers uh, about a year ago. Wow. Now, what kind of things do you all do together? We go to the beach, go to a whole lot of places and always have fun. Now, okay, now Matt, I need to know what you've learned from Thomas. I'm sure you've taught him some stuff, but he's probably taught you a few things. Uh, he actually has taught me a lot. Uh, art appreciation, one of them. Uh, how to be unconditionally loving is another one. Um, and just enjoying the little things in life and uh, learning how to be a kid again. Always nice to be reminded to give back. And as you know, Santa is very busy this time of year, but he did manage to squeeze in some time with our residents to have breakfast. Breakfast with Santa is sponsored by the City of Rancho Palos Verdes Recreation and Parks Department. The event raises money for the REACH program, which serves young adults with developmental disabilities. Hi, I'm Taylor and we're here at Breakfast with Santa, benefiting the REACH program. Now let's go meet Santa. This is such a crazy exciting day. We have Santa coming on a fire truck, we've got carolers, we've got violinists coming, great food, story time singing, it's just the best day ever. And our REACH folks are here today too. They are the reason we're having the event. It's a fundraiser for them. We're so happy. We're sold out. Woohoo! Um, how was it meeting Santa Claus? Oh, we had fun. He was out. Where did you see Joe? Where did you see Santa? On two fire trucks. And he took a picture with Santa out on the fire trucks. And then he talked to the firemen out there. The firemen were very friendly and they talked to him too. Well, Rancho Palos Verdes has uh, uh, probably the most outreach, community outreach events of all the peninsula cities and it keeps us together, it keeps the spirit of the community alive. It reminds us not only what the season is about, but what we are all about as a community. And uh, this is really exciting to be here. Um, it's a great fundraiser for the REACH program and the more fundraisers that that individual programs can have, the better it is for everyone. But we also really appreciate and are, we are really fortunate to have such a great program here. Can you tell us a little bit more about the REACH program? REACH is a recreation program for the developmentally disabled in our community and we do all kinds of fun stuff, get them out in the community, we like to do lots of community service, we like to have a lot of fun along the way too, maybe see a movie, go see a play, so it's a really great program to develop friendships. Okay, Santa, so everyone's dying to know, what's your favorite cookie? My favorite cookie? I like all cookies, but 
if I have to be put on the spot, chocolate chip is my favorite. Ho, ho, ho. But please, non-fat milk. I've got to lose a few pounds here. And so should we leave anything else special for your reindeer? My reindeer, they, they love granola. They love carrots. They are very healthy eaters, especially Rudolph. Got to keep that nose shiny. To all the residents of Rancho Palos Verdes and Palos Verdes, happy holidays. Ho, 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 ho! And we're always happy when Santa stops by. And that will do it for us. From everyone here at RPV TV, we'd like to wish all of our residents a very happy and safe holiday. And now more holiday greetings from our city council. We'll see you in 2013. My name is Susan Brooks. I'm on the city council in Rancho Palos Verdes. I want to wish you a happy, healthy, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, a wonderful new year. And we have a lot to be thankful for. We are really blessed to live in this wonderful place called Paradise. It's been a pleasure serving as your mayor for the year 2012. And I want to wish everyone a very Merry, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year and happy Kwanzaa, all the uh, happy holidays that we can wish. And more importantly, from the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, I wish everyone to have a very safe, safe holiday season. Palos Verdes, a happy holidays and a healthy and prosperous new year. We are so lucky to live in this beautiful city and this high quality of life. And um, I'm here to make sure that that remains for years to come. So happy holidays to everybody. Hi, this is Councilman Jerry Dehovic from Rancho Palos Verdes. I'd just like to wish all the citizens of RPV and everyone on the Hill, from me and my family, a very happy holiday season. Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, whatever your religious persuasion is, if any. Uh, please enjoy those traditions and I wish you a very merry, happy and blessed holiday. I also wish you a very healthy, happy, and prosperous new year. Uh, we look forward to great things in the city of RPV and our sister cities on the hill. Again, from me and my family, Merry Christmas and happy holidays. God bless. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to everyone in Rancho Palos Verdes. My name is Brian Campbell. I represent you on the RPV City Council. I hope all of you are going to spend as much time with your friends and family as I hope to do with my family. My wife and I have two young boys that go to elementary school here locally. They were born here. They're going to grow up here. And there isn't a day that I don't wake up that I don't feel truly blessed and lucky that we live in Rancho Palos Verde. So have a terrific 2013. Thank you very much.